Good afternoon and God bless you and thank you for tuning in to another hour of anointing. Please, my Apostle Vincent Takosa of Christ Citadel International Church. We are one church in four places here in California. And um, I'm grateful that God gives us this privilege to fellowship together in the Word and to feel encouraged and to be touched at this moment of the power of God being revealed through these sessions. You know, before I proceed, should we look to God in prayer together? Mighty God, I'm grateful to you in Jesus' name for this platform and privilege. I pray that, Father God, I come, I come with humility, I come with yieldedness, that you will use me as your broken, pliable instrument. Father God, to speak your word to bless your people. I pray in Jesus' name that nothing will be naturally contrived, but everything that will come from me will be inspired to reward the faith, the confidence, the trust of your people, and that none will leave the place the same as they came. And those that are hearing all across the globe, Father God, let the power in your way be activated to bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much again. Please, if you have your Bible in hand, shall we look at the Word of God from Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, we'll read from verse 3 to 9. Matthew 13, reading from verse 3 to 9. Let's look at the Word of God. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some seed fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear the word of God. I want to just, as the Spirit of God enables me yet again, to bring you a message pertaining to the parable of the sower. You know, um, any student of the Bible has heard over and over again the story of the parable of the sower. And there are so many elements to this that I don't believe we'll be able to exhaust absolutely and adequately the message of the parable of, in this parable for our benefit, but as the Spirit of God allows us for the benefit of time that we have, that I believe enough truth will, be, will come out of this to bless all of you over there. We see one thing, that this story talks of one individual, one sower, and this sower was holding, you know, a sack of seeds, and anybody who has done some maybe agriculture or farming before know that there are other ways of where farmers plant their seed. And any farmer who gets up, I grew up in Africa, and usually when I was a little boy, I'd follow my grandmother to the farm. Sometimes we get that very early to go to, you know, to the farm with my cousins to go and help her you know, because he was a, a peasant farmer. So we'll go out there and help out, you know, not nothing mechanized, everything mechanical, and she'll so we'll go, you know, but you agree with me. No farmer will rise up early in the morning like my grandmother used to get up and go and spend perhaps all day in the land preparing the land, weeding and clearing all kind of, you know, weeds and removing debris and burning all that 
preparing the land that in, at the end of the day, he, a farmer, a serious farmer, will want to, you know, waste his seeds. The seeds are what? The most important treasure of every farmer. Because, and that is why in certain places where maybe, you know, they don't have the, 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 the advancement of, or the privilege of science, in storing seeds and things like that, farmers go through a great deal of, you know, meticulous planning so that they will save their seeds because the point is this. Their sustenance, their livelihood depends on those seeds. If those seeds get what? Maybe messed up in a way, it means that, you know, they are going to starve. They depend on the land, the land and the produce of the land to support themselves, support their families, and even what? Also to be able to make, you know, certain income to sustain themselves. So the seeds mean everything to the farmer. Imagine a farmer having a vast tract of land and having nothing, no seeds to plant on them. So the, you know, everything that the farmer expects, everything that the farmer anticipates to receive is based on all the seeds. They will do everything and anything to protect their seeds. And then when the time for planting, the planting season comes, they go there and they make sure that those, the land, you know, sufficient seeds have been planted on the land, trusting God for the rains to come so that they can have what? A bumper harvest to support themselves and to be able to know that, yes, God has been good to them. So the seeds means everything to the farmer. Having said that, there was one man in this story with his seeds. But then the Bible is giving us different scenarios of the texture of the grounds where the seeds were going to be what? To be planted. And he was doing a kind of planting that is called broadcasting. So which means that he was just what? You know, put his hand on the, on the sack, dig out, you know, fetch some seeds and spread them. You see? And then the Bible was telling us he kept doing it. He has faith in his seed that if the seed lands somewhere and the seed grows and bear fruit, you know, as far as the seed gets a place to, to land and there's soil and then it grows, he knows that his hard work is not going to be in vain. We see that this one man, that is God, who through Jesus Christ is giving us the word. My brothers and sisters, we need the word of God in us. The different scenarios here, some of the, 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 the soil, one of the, the seed fell by the wayside, some on a rocky place, and all that, it is the condition of the heart. The condition of the heart. In Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29, the Bible says, Oh, that they may have a heart such as this, to fear me and to obey me, so that it will be well with them and with their children, children. All that this is talking about, the seed and all that is predicated on the condition of your heart to receive the word of God. The word of God is also what? The express will of God. That is it. If we allow room for God's word to come into our lives and for the word to influence and to change us. Because if the seed touches the place, within the seed is the, is the root that we don't see. If a seed is lying in your hand, you can hardly see that it has roots unless it falls on the soil, and then it grows up and it sinks its roots. If we allow the word of God to dwell in you and for it to sink its roots, both the top and the adventitious root to spread in our heart, and then it builds itself some ground, some solid foundation, and then it grows up, then it starts bearing fruit. God wants his word to benefit you. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent forth his word.
to heal and to deliver. The Bible tells us there was nothing that was made without the word of God. And God is sending the word to bless you. God is sending the word to deliver you out of whatever situation, whatever plight, whatever predicament that you find yourself trapped in. Only the word. There was nothing that was made, John chapter 1, without the word. And the word, the Bible tells us in the beginning the word was God and the word was God. And that word incarnated and came to live amongst us. In the same process, God wants the word of God to be fully and absolutely incarnated in your life. Why? Because as he is, so shall we be. We, the word, must find a room in our hearts to grow. But we saw the different soil, you know, texture and conditions. So when the, he was spreading, he has faith in his seed. As God has faith in his seed, his word, according to Isaiah 55, 10, will not return to him void until it has accomplished what it was sent for. The word of God. We saw in Genesis chapter 1, the primeval chaos, the world was formless, shapeless, and darkness was all over the place, and all God had was his word. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And the Bible gave us what? A sequence. See how poetic and rhythmic it was. God said and 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 it was. Everything in creation in the heavens and on earth, whatever God said became. And the Bible says God saw it was good and he blessed it. Now the point is that was the creation. In your life, in your, in your situation, in your circumstances, the darkness that is what wants to overtake you, the darkness that is want to, has placed a seed over you, God is saying something. But the point is this, uh, is the soil texture, the texture of your heart, the disposition of your heart, the condition of your heart. Is it the right texture to receive the seed of the word of God so that what God is saying becomes what he wants it to become in your life? God said, and it was. The farmer is spreading the seed of forgiveness, of repentance, of change, of seeking Christ and committing yourself to him, of turning your life around, of giving your life, of being serious, of dedicating your life seriously. He's spreading it. But then, these are the various scenarios. Some of the seed fell by roadside. There are many Christians who are what? Roadside Christians. They are trying, you know, they are, they are falling into the trap of, you know, trying many other things. Well, you know, I can be a Christian and also I can be this, you know, and I can be this. So they are falling into the trap of syncretism. They are borderline Christians. I met a, a guy who told me he's a borderline Christian. No, you are a syncretistic Christian. You believe in Christ, but you also believe in other things. God actually was speaking to the people of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah when he said that you call other gods your father. Water gods, stone gods as your father. But when you are in trouble, you cry to me. Why don't you call them to help you? It was King, like King Saul who in times of desperation rushed to the house of the witch of Endor to go and console with Demo. The Bible tells us, 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13, he went to consult with a demon. There are many Christians who are like that, consulting with psychics, palm readers, praying with, to other deities, and calling themselves Christians. But then when they are in trouble, they want God to help them. You are a wayside. You have the truth. The truth of the seed is in you. You know that there is only one God, creator, owner, possessor of all things in heaven. Well, but when desperate times come, are you fair? Ironically, we are talking about seeds that will produce crops. When those plants 
when those trees, that two seed, when the farmer goes to a particular place and farms and the tree, let's assume maybe he's a, he's a maize planter and all wheat, and the, the wheat, they germinate. Bad times or good times, those seeds, those um, wheat or the corn that has germinated, they are not going to move to another land. They will remain rooted where they are. Night or day, till they will remain on that place. They will be rock solid. They will sing their roots. They don't walk. They stay put. Do you stay put for God? Or you're just a waffle, a shifting star, chameleonizing Christian. Today you are blue, tomorrow you are green. Nobody knows where you belong. You are by the wayside. Listening to other, you know, snippers here. Oh, here, there's another Jesus here, and then you are there. There's another Savior here, and you are there. There's this one in there. Remain rooted where you are, in the way, and trust him. Because, listen, he was spreading the seed, and he came to find you where you are. As the seed, right now, you are watching me on television. You may be in another country, maybe another nation. But this message is coming to you. That is the seed being spread. But you have to decide what kind of soil test are you? Are you by the wayside? Or are you, by, are you a thorny Christian? Or you are a good soil Christian? So you let the truth find room in your heart. We have a few minutes and God is spreading the seed. Of salvation. Praise God. The Bible says, How can they hear Romans chapter 10? How can they hear unless someone is sent? And God has sent me to bring this message in the way, same way as He sent someone some time ago to come and preach. And I heard the gospel and I turned my life to Jesus and I've never looked back. And I, is myself, I'm being used by Him also to spread the same message of the seed of the gospel of faith that brought salvation to me, to bring that message of hope to you. So we settled up the wayside. You have to make up your mind and belong. Get out from the wayside. We found him, let Christ be enough. When blind Martinius was sitting by the wayside and got what, what he wanted, he never went back to sit by the wayside. When the cripple who was sitting by the beautiful gate, God healed, he never went to sit down there. Some of you are still sitting at the same place, waiting and looking for another deliverer, another savior, another Jesus, another, no, get up, you got the truth, and go out there and let Christ use you. Another thing is the Bible says, you know, the seed fell among thorns. Sometimes, listen, and I always tell people, when God, you get the message of salvation. You see, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 33, evil communication corrupts good manners. Same way as, John, as someone was telling us, we shouldn't sit among what? Among sinners and scoffers. If you keep company of people who are always disparaging the gospel and saying terrible things, those are your best friends, I tell you, those are the thoughts. They will choke the truth out of you. It's either you influence them or a reverse engineering session, and they influence you and draw you out of the kingdom. And there are so many people that are being negatively impacted and being drawn away. The same guy that will let behind you used to be your drinking buddies, used to be people you used to hang out with. If you don't share the gospel and let them know that you have changed, your life has turned around, they will negatively impact you and draw you back to what you are trying to run away from. You are sitting among thorns, and it is a choice that you have made. You are allowing other influences to come to attack you. And someone say, well, I have no choice. And I know sometimes some of you may be in certain countries where people believe in other religions other than Christ. But the point is this. Take a firm stand. Refuse. We saw what Daniel did in Babylon. 
The king was going there, going to serve him delicacies from the table of the, of the king. Yes, nice food, but it has been dedicated to idols, contaminated. As a child of God, he refused to eat that kind of food. He said, I'd rather starve than eat sumptuously food that is dedicated to idols, that is contaminated. Let people know. Let your light shine. Let your Bible say, Matthew chapter 5, 16, let your light so shine before all men so that they may see your good work and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let that light shine. Isaiah 61 tells us, rise, arise and shine for thy light has come. Your light has come. This is your moment. Let people know what to stand for. Because if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And those are the choking influences, the environment that you find yourself in. People who want to draw you back into the sinful past. Be more determined and resolute. Let them know that this time is not going to happen. And the Bible says some fell among shallow places. Yes, they are shallow. It is more self-explanatory. There are some people who are very, very shallow, but they, they talk too much. They think they know so much, but they don't know nothing. You know, it's only in Christianity that anybody that you mean seems to be and claims to be an authority in the Bible. And perhaps they don't even know the Bible. They just want to argue and influence negatively. Take a firm stand and be more hot, rooted in the Word. Stay in the Word. Don't be shallow. Read the Bible every day. Apply the word. Stay in the word. Read every day, prayerfully. Maybe three chapters of the Bible a day or two chapters. But apply yourself. Let the Bible become like, you know, your spiritual vitamin that you take every day. And if you pray, you stay in it, you will grow thereby. First Peter 2.2, 2, as dearly beloved children, desire the sincere milk of the word that you will grow thereby. When the Bible says some fell on, on good soil and some yielded 40, some 30, 60, some 100. You have to understand, there is what? In the seed, God has guaranteed what? 100% blessing for you. There's 100% blessing in the word of God for you. If there's what? If it is well received with the right application, with the right soil texture. How is it that the same word is benefiting others and it's not benefiting others? How is it the same word is healing others, bringing salvation to others, is blessing Abraham? Bible says what? In Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Abraham, you know, believed in God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And this same Abraham was what? Even at the age of 100, received his promise. And God prospered Abraham. Why? Because Abraham was very obedient to God. According to Genesis chapter 18, verse 18 and 19, God himself testified how Abraham feared him and was very obedient to him. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 14, the angel says, Now I know you fear me. He was going to sacrifice his son as God said. Why is it that the word is blessing others but not blessing others? It, it, it's all predicated on the heart, kind of heart that you have. The way you receive the word. How receptive you are to the word. If you, are, you receive it partially, you get partial results. If you are kind of, I don't know, kind of sort of, you, you have the same If You are a bit indifferent, you will see have the same way. But if you receive the word hook, line, and sinker, it is the word of God. Like Peter said in Luke chapter 5, I've worked all night, but by thy word, by thy word, I will cast the net. And the Bible said, said that he garnered so much fish at the time of drought. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 13, God told Isaac not to go to Egypt and to land farm on the land that was drought stricken. And Isaac obeyed God. And the Bible says he had what? 100% harvest. I want to pray that God will bless you. Open your heart to the truth. God wants to bless you, but he can't do nothing without his word. 
He can heal you without his word. He can prosper you without his word. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Open your heart to faith and your miracle is not far. The creative capability is in the word. Close your eyes and say after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent for not being truthful, for not being faithful. I beg you, forgive me. Please, search my heart and prepare my heart. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, it tells us of the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Give me a pure heart so that I will be able to see you. I beg you, Jesus, forgive me. I repent today. Make me a good soil believer so that your word will benefit me 100%. I thank you and I repent. I invite Jesus anew into my life in Jesus' name. And Father God, I pray for this confession. Anybody out there who is sick, Jesus, let them have an evidence of this 100% promise, 100% blessing, 100% miracle. Bless your people. Touch them. Transform their lives. Whatever situation or circumstance they find themselves in, Jesus, deliver them. I release God's open heavens upon you. May God bless and prosper all your endeavors. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you for tuning in to join us. We'll meet again next week, God willing. Please invite people to come and join us, even on this television series. But if you are in California, especially in the Los Angeles area, and you are looking for a church home to come and worship, please call the number on the screen, amen, and come and worship with us. You receive direction and come and worship with us, amen. My name, again, is Pastor Vincent, of course, of Christ, it's International Church. Until next week, remain blessed. <laughs>